Doctori, tutta post, welcome back to a new episode of Sane C++ Libraries. That is a set of C++ platform abstraction libraries for macOS, Windows and Linux. Focusing on fast compile times, being bloat-free, simple and readable and easy to integrate with no use of the C++ standard library exceptions and no third-party dependencies. So you have this beautiful list of libraries and if you want to take a look at them, they're very really nicely documented. You can add the library to your project by just adding a single Unity build file and you can build it as a developer, so generating all of the projects uh, using the internal build system. And you can get in touch using Discord or any of the usual suspect social networks. Um, that being said, there is an extensive list of videos that I'm trying to record regarding the development process of the library. Make sure to check them out. And there are even some blog posts where I am sometimes writing uh, reports months after months. I have not been writing a few <laughs> reports for a couple of months, but that's all right. That being said, um, let's go back to what we will be doing today. So for today, we will be continuing to do what was um, done in you know was not done in the previous video so what whatever we left to be done and um, in particular that would be implementing this async request retrieve for a socket so let's just briefly recap what was done in the previous video in the previous video we have created this async pipeline object that is something that can take a source and a sink and um, basically route the source to multiple destinations. When doing that, it listens asynchronously for whatever data arriving to the source and writes it to the destination. Then we implemented this uh, readable stream, which uses a file, um, async file read, which, that is an asynchronous file read object from the SSC async library. We are routing the callbacks such that we are pushing the data we receive on the stream and also handling the, the buffering um, that can, you know, buffers can just be exhausted. So we are going to pause the stream and things like that. And we have done the same for the writable side. So we can write um, files for now, which is cool. And then there is this test where I'm generating data I'm setting up an event loop, creating like a readable and a writable stream. The readable stream is, um, so I'm writing a file. The readable stream is then opened, uh, set up with a file opened at this file that I have just created. And I'm making sure to route all of the data using the pipeline and writing it to a destination file. Then I will open the destination file and do and do this final check, which in which I'm checking if the written data is exactly what I'm expecting the, you know, the file to contain. Uh, I'm checking if the contents of the file are exactly what I'm, my expectations about its contents should be. So what I would like to do today is um, changing, actually extending these two operations. Um, actually, they are streams, so not operations extending the streams to handle the sockets. And let's start to do that. My first idea to do that would be to make this a template parameter. So template, um, oh, I have the Italian keyboard. That's bad for coding. So I can say type name request type. And once I have there's a request type, my async file read becomes my request type. So before doing anything, let's first make it compile using this request type. And let's do the same also here. So I'll do request type also on the writable side. And my async file write becomes request type. Maybe write request type. Should I start with the I don't know thing? No, probably not. Um, so request type is fine. So maybe I can do a couple of using. So I can say using um, async 
request writable stream how can I call this async file writable stream yeah async file write and then I can do the readable using an async file read does it sound good to you I think it should be good. So let me put them here and I should replace them here. So, oh, wait a minute. Come on, select this. Writable and readable. This still compiles, which is encouraging. So now what I would like to do is create like a socket one so let's say socket read but they are not called socket read and write they're called socket receive if I remember correctly yes and socket send which maps a little bit better to you know or receive and send in sockets right so these are our sockets of course this is compiling still good let me try to create them i suspect we will get some errors let's let's double check uh, maybe i should make this writable and this should be readable socket stream or maybe just socket stream uh, socket writable socket readable and we can let's rename this right let's say this is a file files uh, readable stream and this is a file writable stream and this is a file readable requests and these are the file writable requests now i'm creating also the sockets which of course are not going to work because they have yeah the first one that doesn't work is for sure the lambda result how where can i see this uh can i see it somewhere in the this is, this is what it's really bad about errors in CPP. It's really a situation where you don't really understand when there is a type mismatch here because it's this very generic code. It's not showing you the exact invocation. But I think I can already see what's the problem because here I have our coded async file write so now I can say yeah even here so I can say request type and this requires type name all right no member get in async request of also there is no get um, async socket send completion data yeah there is no get do i have um an error that i can use where is the result stored the completion data async completion data no let's see if i have this still async file right can i make it result return code yeah so that that should be part of return code get test return code no does it work oh is a protected member of the result oh is valid okay so it is result is valid so I can remove these and I can say that my async file write is my request type, right? 
let's do that request type I need a type name here because I'm differencing a type inside that is nested inside request type of course we have to remove this and this is compiling at least now we have other errors which I suspect are for the writable let's see what the writable is doing and this was already the writable where am I getting the error I'm not understanding where this is what line it's it's selected here that's really weird so this is invoking the lambda in the instantiation of this file well we have to read instantiation of instantiation of member function read uh, member function async readable stream there is no remove reference reference type async socket receive result uh, hmm. Hmm. Oh yes, this one, right. That's that's really this this error this error stacks in CPP compilers are really curious. I still have an error here, yeah. End of file. Oh yeah, because this I think the the name of the equivalent of end of file is disconnected in the socket operation so I should probably do like a struct internal something like this should work mm, I can say bool is ended and then I can overload it for async um, request which one async file read uh, result and I can return this can be static I can return result dot and end of file completion data end of file and then I can do the same for async socket receive this will be disconnected so that I can replace this one with internal is ended yes what else do I have uh, there is still one more async read which needs to become site name request result Oh, this succeeded. Beautiful. All right, so now I need to try doing the init for them, which I suspect will issue more errors. Yeah, this should really be readable stream. This should be writable stream. I don't yeah I need the requests as well so this should be socket readable requests and then I need socket writable requests writable requests so you see each stream has a request queue associated with it and it needs to you know, it looks like we need to create a lot of stuff, but you will not really be creating all of these objects in this way, like I'm doing in the test. 
you will probably create some higher level object and this will be basically the, the queue storage that you can you know you can give it like a static size like i'm doing here but you can just lock like a, an array of whatever customer has decided need to be the the user has decided to for for it to be the let's say a given size of the queue and you can just use it so yes this needs to come as a second argument and also here uh oh i don't have socket descriptor so i probably need to take them from somewhere i think in the um, async dot async test dot cpp there's a create socket pair yeah create tcp socket pair should probably refactor this to be some sort of common function but not now so i'm going to place it here just copying it so there is no file descriptor yes because i'm trying to create now sockets using file descriptors which is not going to work so let's create the sockets so create tcp socket pairs event loop client and server set client so event loop client maybe i can do client zero client one where my clients are socket descriptor client two yeah and i'm creating the socket pair no matching member function oh that's not even failing all right no member names file descriptor yes because the socket does not have a, a file descriptor i think it has a socket descriptor so this needs to be another template type name descriptor type so this is descriptor type descriptor get uh, okay i need to make this return the descriptor type which is going to be socket descriptor handle get descriptor for async socket receive request and i can say return request dots what's the name of it no that's a socket mm. handle okay handle while for the async file read this is file descriptor and it's a file descriptor handle these are like the lower level operating system handles that are getting written into the async request objects so i can just say internal get descriptor and this should be fine we have it in another place yes of course in the writable it's just the same so i can just copy this internal structure here and make it um, socket send and file write so i can say internal get descriptor that's a technique you can use when you have code that is mostly generic enough such that you can put a template here um, but 
you have like a difference in the name of the fields. I mean, I could rename these fields to be bot hand handle or bot descriptor. So this code will be working anyway, but there is really, you know, I don't want to break the binary compatibility, the ABI of that library, even if this entire CNCPP project doesn't care about ABI for now. But I don't think it's a good idea. Just breaking and changing the names of fields for no reason. So this now compiles fine. Excellent. So I have a file readable stream, a file writable stream, a socket readable stream, and a socket writable stream that are basically sharing the same code. And that's because all of the supporting objects from the SC async libraries, they basically behave the same. They are they have common pattern, which is this callback, this re result object, and the minor differences between them are getting considered here, you know, the name of the condition that generates the end of the readable stream. It's the end of file for a file and it's the disconnected event for socket. And even the, um, the low level operating system descriptors have different names here, even different types. So I'm accommodating for that. Generic programming. Now, I have my sockets, I have my files. What should I do? I should probably I should probably change my pipeline. I need to have two pipelines. Because one pipeline will be a file readable stream and well, I need to do other things before that one. Because if I have two pipelines, I cannot use the same pool. So this will be pool one, buffers one, buffer one size, number of buffers one. And this is buffer Where am I gone? Why is where is Xcode going? I'm getting lost. I was just renaming things. So this is buffer one. Okay, this is still compiling. Now I need to create a buffer two, right? So I can move all of this socket craziness down below and just copy all of this. I know, I know, I can, pro <laughs> I can probably do better than just copying all of this stuff, but I mean, that's a test. As long as it does what it does, there is no point in making it like best possible code. I'm, I mean, sometimes I do it because you really want to create maybe a test that is also some sort of documentation. That's not the case here. I just want to create a test. So I'm going to copy everything I can. So I have my second pool where I have created another buffer. Oh. What's wrong here? Oh, this is buffers one, buffers two. I hope I have done everything correct. Worst case, it'll crash. So this is buffers two, buffers two. I have my sockets and now I need to route, I need to create two pipelines. The first one will be a file writing to the socket, writable stream. And this will be pipeline zero. So 
So this is destination. Uh, one. Pipeline zero in it. Pipeline zero start. Okay, I can do the same for pipeline one. And now my pipeline one will be socket readable stream. So that's the socket connected to this one. So this is pipeline one. And we write to a file file writable stream. So what this pipeline is doing is reading the file, is writing to a socket. Then we have another pipeline that is reading from a socket connected to the, the right socket because I'm creating a socket pair basically. And I'm writing it to the file. So we are doing the same as before, but for absolutely no reason other than testing <laughs> the stream implementation. I'm trying to pipe this the content of the file through a pair of sockets. So we can close the descriptors and we can close the clients. All right. Sounds good. Um, will it work? I don't know. I said I don't know. Because that's true. I don't know. Well, we have some possibility that this is working. I would say it's low, but it's there. Because the code was already debugged for the file stream. So in theory, we are not doing anything. You see, we have just been adapting, you know, this ended condition and the descriptor, but substantially there, there has been no changes to the code. So unless I mistyped some of this buffer one, buffer two, which I can maybe check, let's see. Yeah, buffer one should be all in this first section and the buffer two in the second section. Looks good. Let's try it. Go. Of course it fails. Where, where, where are you expecting this to work? immediately, seriously. So this is um, failing error, error. Source and things must have the same buffer pool or at least that error message was, was good. So we need to use pool one for this and pool two for this other one. So this becomes our pool two. And this is pull one. So pull one, pull one, pull two, pull two. Look, I told you last time <laughs> that that error would have been useful. We still don't have the same buffer pool. Why? Pipeline zero has file readable stream and file writable. Oh, you're right. This should be pull one. This should be pull two. Okay, we got, we have been able to, to got to the end of the test. Of course, it doesn't work. It would have been way too easy. So let's see, written data, zero. Very, <laughs> very easily, we don't have anything that is being written. Uh, I think one candidate for this problem can be the fact that we are using file descriptors here. That's actually bad because yeah, the operating system file descriptors are really not, um, yeah, they are not type safe. So this is not giving us any error. Let's see if now this is, it's just looping forever. Okay. Let's see, where are we stopping product? 
uh, pause. Oh, we are just in key event. Okay, so we are never going past. Okay, so this is, uh, I think it this is because we don't have the proper routing of and events that are given the conditions such that the are creating the conditions such that the stream can be ended and this is because the file readable stream at some point will end but this will not generate a finish event in the writable stream right so if this is not being actually no this is generating the, the finish event i think are we what are we doing in the pipeline uh we're just writing and we don't have any information if this is ending, right? Mm -hmm. So I should connect the on end. Yes, I should connect the on end event end um, of the file readable. So when the, the first file is finished reading, what should I do? I should end the socket writable stream. Do you agree? And so that when this is ended, it's going to end this readable stream because it's connected. It will get the disconnected event. And when this is getting the disconnected event, well, should I do this? Let, let's try. When I get the disconnected event from the readable stream, then I will close the file writable stream. So the file is even closed because otherwise it will just stay open waiting for more data to arrive to that socket, right? Let's try it. Okay. This is still blocking, right? We are still, so there is still some object, some asynchronous object that is not getting deleted. So what happens when you have an event loop with this asynchronous AO objects and, and you're not terminating all of the um, async objects, what happens is that the event loop will simply not end and you will be stuck. So let's see if any of this is getting called. Okay, so the file readable stream is getting called, but not the other one. So this means the socket readable stream is never getting called, which is not a good thing to happen. So we are never getting the is ended. I was wondering if this is ended should be elsewhere. Maybe I should do it. I don't remember if that, um, if the disconnected event may, may cause like error to be reported, honestly. So I'll probably try to do this which is correct anyway, because if something is ended, you want to end, you don't care if there is an error, I think. So, and no, so that was not the problem. So let's say socket writable, is this what we want? Do we want to end the writable stream here? That's actually not correct because this may still be writing. Uh, 
is this is the no we don't want the end we want to uh, what is the ending state going to wait for all of the buffers to be written probably not Hmm, this looks not so easy to solve. So I'm getting file readable stream event end. And when I'm getting, when the file is finished, I am ending socket writable stream. And then when, but this is, doesn't mean that, that it will be finished. So I need to say socket writable stream f event finish add listener. And my listener should close client zero. Right. Are we even arriving here? So this is ending stream, then we are closing. Okay. So when we close client, oh, I'm not even sure that I'm, so this is client this is server side client. Hmm. As long as I use them properly, that should be okay. So I need to do client zero, client one, closing client zero. So when I close client zero, is it going into this? All right, yes, we are now getting the end event for socket readable stream and closing the file writable. Why are we getting multiple of them? I don't know. But the test succeeded. So <laughs> I don't think everything is right. So now we are going to celebrate anyway, because this, the test succeeded, but I want to double check if things are properly succeeding. Because, okay, let's say I am, how many times am I, even getting this event and called. Why I've seen like two invocations. That doesn't doesn't look like something that should happen. So let's look at writable. I'm getting an, I'm getting the close, I'm getting the end, and I'm getting the end again. Why? What state I'm in? That's probably a bug here. State is ended. Well, I need to. Yeah, probably before calling end. State is async pushing. Hmm. Yeah, so push and it's going to do that. Why am I still here? Because push and is getting cold. Oh, but that's another test. 
wait a minute, that's another test. Hold on. I'm getting confused. Let's disable the other tests. SC test. Let's just do the request string test, right? So we have this, this. Oh, okay. I was just getting confused by other tests that were running. So this is working for real. And I, I think that this is good. This is working for real. And, and I mean, the test is certifying that whatever we are creating here, this reference test data, which is just a sequence of integers, it's getting written to a file. This file is getting read. It's going through a socket that is received on the other side of this, another socket. And then we are writing it to another file. And then we are checking that the content of the second file is correct. I mean, you could implement like a sync client uh, with this approach. Of course, that's very simple, but I think the concept will will be will be fine. Where where you have like a file on a hard drive and you want to transport this file over the network and recreate that file on like a remote peer, so. That's probably what you're going to do, something very similar to this. Uh, of course, you would do something more realistic, like putting CRCs and splitting and chunking it and um, encrypting it and maybe compressing it. But uh, the concept will be something like this. You are streaming data and probably that's where transforms will be useful because you can encrypt and compress and do all of these other things. So no support for transforms for now which is an object that does exist in Node.js. Um, I'm not sure when and if I will be adding support for it, but for now we will be fine with, uh, with the source and the destination. So that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something uh, even during my confusion. So you will understand that even when you're trying to do something that you know honestly quite well these are like topics that i'm very familiar with you are still getting confused a lot and you are still going to do dumb things so just don't worry about it go uh, forward go ahead and implement whatever you think at something that is cool and that you enjoy doing it so that's all for today see you next time with the next video with Saint C++ libraries. Right.